Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an intro lab. Yeah, I kind of figured that out myself. But I didn't know anything else. What is it we got here? I can of course see we got some, we got two inputs, two RTD inputs. And they're called input one and two. And then there is this switch uh, where you select between the two inputs. All right. I kind of figured that out myself. And um, we got a little IEEE interface. See? IEEE interface and all that. But then that is all I got of information when I got this thing. Because the top lid is missing. And that one keeps the secret with there's a supposed to be right here in this big hole. This is where the big sticker with all the information is normally placed. And since I don't have that one, I've got no information about what this is. So here's what I did. I took a photo of this front panel and I did a Google picture search. And there you have it. Look at the picture I found. This one is called, uh, of course, Instrolab, and then uh, 4221-13-15-08. Oh, what a funky uh, type number. And it's, of course, a dual RTD temperature IEEE logger. And if you look a little bit careful on the picture, you can see I got a problem with mine. See? Here is a supposed to be a switch, and this one should, should um, select between yeah, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and uh, resistance. And that one is broken. Here is the back side of that switch, and if we look real careful, I think the way that this switch works is that it connects um, two and two points, like these two and those two, and in the middle, and then in the other section right there. So I could easily solder some connections on the bottom of the circuit board and make it read out something, right? And there we have some uh, uh, port driver chips to handle all the LED segments. Some more port driver chips. And uh, yeah, a ton of those, by the way. And here is a little microcontroller. This is the ADC85, a famous microcontroller. External RAM and the EEPROM with the software. Unfortunately, we also have one of these Dallas clock chip backup chips for settings, data storage, or whatever like that. I don't know yet what that little SMD component is doing right there. That will be the IEEE interface. And uh, we got, of course, a tons of uh, analog op amps and all the analog stuff. Uh, got uh, plus minus 15 volt supply and a big powerful uh, 5 volt supply. So, uh, and what is that? Some internal hidden switches to do some. Uh, Count this and select that, whatever. Internal programming. Well, no manuals, no schematic, no information whatsoever to find anywhere. So I am a little bit lost. But what I want to do is I want to try and power up and see if there's any kind of life. And if there is, I will try and solder something here. And yeah, about the RTDs. Um, the most normal of uh, RTDs that will be 100 ohms, right? But if you look at the picture I found uh, online on one of the eBay's um, ads, I found uh, all a backside information about this uh, a similar unit, and it, ex it explains, uh, I, I think it was 25 ohms for an RTD. So that means we got definitely special or different RTDs available. So I don't know exactly what this one is yet, but I prepare to find out if there's any kind of life in this unit. 
So here is my first power up. This switch is of course out and I will just, ooh, let's uh, not forget my little safety protection. I don't want to get hurt. So that is mains applied and we don't see any Oh, oh, bummer. <laughs> maybe the, maybe there's a reason why I got this one. <laughs> okay, well, that is not the most uh, impressive start here. Okay, so fuse is of course blown, and I don't know if you can see the text here. What? It says 120 volts AC. Oh, bugger, bummer. Maybe I should try with 120. So this explains why the fuse explode. What a moppet. Okay, put in a new one. And better luck next time. Oh, I think it was broken. Okay, so let's do this again. I got now 120. Okay. And this is out. Let's... No, it's not using anything in here. Woohoo! It's alive! So what is it doing? I triple E open la 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 yeah. Oi! That looks really pretty! So there's something is going on. Wow, it's alive! And it's this is at 120 and of course I don't have the manual and uh, there's this uh, let me show you. So here we go. Well I'm better Turn off mains entry. Stupid to <laughs> touch anything here, right? I mean, maybe this is mains voltage uh, selection, right? So what I should do, because I got a variable, uh, uh, vario, um, so I should probably figure out how to rewire this for 230. But first I want to play with this. I can definitely uh, continue my little project. I need to pull this out somehow and see if I can access the switch at the bottom and then I'll try and do all that. Cool. So I think this is how it works, right? So that will be, of course, the chassis. One of the mains wires in and that one is from the fuse input. And that will be the switch. And But then look! We've got two white wires and two black wires going into a mains entry connector like that. What I think that is, isn't that two 120 volt uh, windings in parallel? Because they go to that one and the other two goes to probably that one, right? So there's probably a, a, a way to uh, make this uh, run on uh, Europe power. I'm not giving up that easy. So unscrew the wires and then I could pull out the bottom. Now I will see, look at those plates. They are reused from all sorts of other uh, products. So they have only the same piece of metal. And this one only holds the circuit boards and uh, not a lot more. I want to get rid of that one so I can access this little switch down there and do a little bypass. So I spent all this time trying to access this switch from the bottom side, but all you need to do is pull out the display, bada bing bada bum, and there you have it. Easy peasy. <laughs> but, uh, but now I can clean the back side of the acrylic and I can clean the Ah, oh, they're nice and uh, fine. Oh, look at that. It's funny. We've got different sizes of LEDs. And here we got those drivers. It's really funny with the date code. See, 81, 84. And it's full of really, really old ICs from 80 something. And um, I think 83, that one. But the software is from 90, and this clock chip is from 92. So I think, would you sell this with brand new software in 90, and then put in a battery two years later, change that? No, you will not. So I think 92, that is 
the age of this uh, product, but they didn't change the software from 90. And uh, they just had a huge stock of components and they just used old, old components. See, this one is from 78. What the heck? That is so funny. I normally don't see that. Normally, all the date codes, they are more or less plus minus like a few years maybe. Ooh, here is some... What is that? LT1001. So that will be the four wires for the mains entry. And uh, we had two black wires there and we had two white wires going there, right? So I just cut a random white and a random black one. And now there is no connection between these two when I take my ohm meter. So that means I could probably just connect these two together and then I will have the two windings in series. But we also got the phasing. So is this right or is this wrong? Hmm, let's see what's going on here. Sometimes I got the right to be lucky. So here's what I did. I was just lucky to pick the two white and black ones and I soldered them here to the to the one in the middle that was not connected. So now I actually have the option to make it 115 or 230 by moving this one. So now we are in 230 mode and uh, the unit of course works. So how I do this is, uh, well, I normally just turn up the voltage real slowly, like 30 volts, and then measure I got 15 at the middle and 13 here, uh, 30 here. Then I know that it divides the voltage correctly and then I can just crank it uh, all the way up because if it's the, if they're phased wrong, it will use a lot of current and it will be in, uh, in the wrong phasing. So you really don't know, you need to do it right. Let's enjoy the layout a little bit. It's really clear this is made by hand by the way everything is in a little bit of random angles and you see those little details and uh, when you place ICs on your transparent film you use this, those uh, rubber rubbing sheets and then you put the pads and those little in between tracks they are a part of this IC footprint and see they are left there and then you take your tape and then you connect with your little tape tracks to those little in between thingies right there I think it's quite cute they left them like that you can even see how the track goes there and then you have this little circle and so on so yeah, that is uh, that is how it was back in the 80s, before CAT. So you just gotta... I, well, I'm, I don't envy. <laughs> it is a little bit better today with all this uh, CAT and computer funky stuff, but I just, uh, I just enjoy the patience. Patience level, expert level. So let's see what I've done. Here is a little trimmer and I adjusted this for 100 ohms for channel for input one and this is uh, input one. So it powers up and it shows some little test and then it shows the address for the IEEE and here is the temperature that it uh, reads. So I think this is very close to zero and this proves the unit is definitely programmed for 100 ohms uh, RTCs, uh, RTDs. So, I mean, this one is definitely usable now that I just shorted it over to uh, Celsius using two little wires and you can easily see those uh, wires. So, um, I was also able to find a, a programmer's guide and a calibration guide because um, there is another model uh, without this uh, dual input and it uses exactly the same 
uh, buttons down here and the same screws here and the I mean the software is more or less uh, the same and uh, so I was able to find this uh, programming user guide and uh, I will probably put a link to that one in the description so you can see um, how to set all this up and how they explained all this oh yeah see it's not the most beautiful wires I just did there but it, it was actually intentionally uh, made so it was ugly so it was easy to see that I have done some modifications uh, to this uh, unit right there and um, um, I don't have an IEEE interface so that is a little bit annoying one day I'll probably make one so we can connect to all sorts of stuff like that and here is my little see my super manual here about how to do that all right, so uh, that is all I wanted to show you about this uh, unit. So thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.